Hey, one of the best things I thought we could do as we start 2023 is to take a look at Mo Norman Swing and the Mo Norman model. I believe that the single plane golf swing will simplify the golf game for majority of golfers that play the game of golf. That means that more golfers are having fun playing golf. That's my mission. What I want to accomplish with that mission is I want every golfer that plays the game to number one, know who Mo Norman is, know that there's a single plane swing out there in the world. So I want every golfer in the world to know about this guy named Mo Norman and about an easier swing that exists out there. And the reason I want that is because there will be a day so that conventional golfer where he is right now, that one day he will get frustrated with his, with his swing. He will get to the point of wanting to quit because the conventional golf swing is that hard. And whether it's now when he's 25 years old or when he's 65 years old, he's gonna wanna quit the game because he just can't do it anymore. And that's the day he's gonna call Graves Golf and learn the single plane swing. I just wanna make sure that everybody knows who Mo Norman is and that there's an easier way to play. All right, so let's take a look as we get into the new year and we're matching Mo Norman's golf swing. One of the most important things I think you can do and one of the most important things that I did in my learning process was match the model. Now, one of the things that I run into as a coach and an instructor is I watch people think they're trying the Mo swing, but they're not really doing Mo Norman's golf swing. And what do I mean by that? Well, you may be watching this YouTube channel thinking, well, I'm gonna watch Todd's videos and go give it a try. The problem with that idea is you don't really know if you're doing it correctly or not. And any of you who say to me, hey, I tried Mo Swing and it didn't work for me, did not do it correctly. And I'm telling you that wholeheartedly in the sense that if you think you're trying it and you're not getting the results you want, I want you to send me a video of your swing matching Mo's swing. And if you're doing exactly what Mo's doing and not getting the results, then you, I'll send you all your money back for all your instruction because I can guarantee you that if you match the Mo Norman golf swing, you will get Mo Norman results. But here's the question, are you actually doing it correctly? And that's what I want to get to today is the most important thing that I ever did when I was learning Mo Swing was to compare myself to Mo by matching him as a model. But you gotta know what you're looking at. So today I wanna go through what I look for in the model, what I see in Mo Norman's Swing, the way I actually look at it, and what I compare myself to. Now I have a video here of Mo when he's 70 years old, so I have multiple different age ranges. Most of you are maybe 50 to, to 75 years old, so you're gonna be, you know, this is a, a really good perspective for you on looking at Mo's swing. If you wanna look at younger Mo's swing, you're gonna see a little more motion. The club may go a little farther back, but you still see all the same positions and dynamics. You just see a little more range of motion and when he was younger. So this is actually, to me, one of the best views of Mo's swing because it hits all the positions that you need to be hitting to get great ball striking results. So let's take a look just starting down the line. This is where I usually start looking at the swing is a down the line perspective. Now what you're seeing here is I'm drawing a line and I'm drawing a line on the club shaft through the trail arm, but it's important you see that the club goes through the middle of the back. So you're seeing a alignment of the club, but it's aligning through the body in a particular way. I call it the club to body relationship. Why is that important? Take a look really quickly. When I take this club down into impact, it returns to that impact plane line. So in other words, it's a spatial thing, right? We're trying to get the club in the proper alignment with the back and through the arms, through the middle of the back, so that's the same space he has from addressed impact. Why is that important? Because if you look at the spine angle, and I'll draw a line on, on his back here, you can see that his angle of the spine maintains. So in other words, this is why you're seeing it safe, the, the swing is safer on the back. He's not compressing the spine, not moving too far up. You're seeing a really nice spatial relationship. Let me back this up a second. So now we see this nice alignment. One of the things you see is the lead arm is above the trail arm. Now, again, I'm matching a model. This is a two-dimensional video. You can easily grab a camera and go out and start matching it yourself. That's what I did. That's what we do when we coach you. We're matching you to this ideal model. But, but the question is, how did he achieve that? Like, how is he getting the lead arm above the trail arm and the club lined up in the single plane? And the answer is through tilt or side bend. 
So now let's look at the view, video on the right. And now you see that he has tilt of his body. And then he also has something that's very important. He has another alignment of the club and the arm. So now you're seeing these alignments. The, it's geometry, really. And, and what's important to this, as you see, is the tilt of the body. The tilt of the body is a primary factor to the single plane swing. And this is really part of why it's an easier golf swing. Not only easier on the body, easier on the back, but it's easier to, for one very important factor. And this is really the definition of simplicity is it's making it easier to get to impact because your body will have side bend and tilt at impact. So conventional golf tends to stand you straight up where we tilt you to start with, we get the club on the impact plane so you can easily achieve that at impact. Let me kind of demonstrate that for you really quickly. So when you see Mo at address and when you're modeling him, and we'll go through some swing positions briefly here too, but when you're modeling his address, what you see is the tilt and you're seeing ranges of motion. So he's getting the body in a position to where it can easily go back to impact and achieve that. The arm position being lined up with the club, what, what, what arm is lined up at impact? Well, the lead arm. The trail arm is bent at impact, the lead arm is straight. So Mo is aligning that at his address position. So what you're seeing happen with Mo here is he's completely simplified the golf swing. What does that mean? Well, he's found an easier way to start and then get back to the moment of impact. Let's look at it some more. So if you continue this, and this is the stuff I look for when I'm modeling Mo, is I'll take him into his backswing. And now you look at this position, and we call this a leverage position. Now, notice the club is forming an angle between the arm and the shaft. This is a leverage position. It's an angle. He's folded the arm. He's hinged the wrists. But there's a, there's a proper way to do this, right? There's an ideal way to do this. If your grip is incorrect, the club face will not be in the right position. Notice the body tilt. He still has some tilt to his body. And notice on the left-hand side here how, I'm going to draw that plane line again, how the club's getting parallel to the plane halfway back, goes to the top, and then it, in, initially when it transitions, gets on the plane line. Now, a lot of you say, well, Todd, it's not on a single plane. It's not moving on the line and moving down. Here's the most important aspect to that, is that the spatial relationship allows him to return the club to the plane that it started. So we need the same space that he has. And the reason you're not seeing the club go back on the same line from the address, the back swing, is because his body's in a different rotation here than it is here. But from a spatial perspective, the club's in the same plane here as it is here from a spatial perspective because of the rotation of the body. So you do not want to see the club go up and down this line. That's because his body's in different rotations, but you want to see the same plane happening throughout the rotation. All right, so it's a very important aspect of the swing. A lot of people get confused on that. They think it should move up and down the plane line. Those circles that you see people use, those are incorrect because they're forcing the body to be in a rotation, not a natural rotation on the way back and a different rotation on the way down. All right, so just keep in mind that you're seeing a single plane club movement, not a one plane motion. There's a, very, there's a big difference there. This is a natural motion. Okay, so let's go back here. Now, he's back in the leverage position at the top. And now he's going to transition. This is where the lower body starts moving first. How do you achieve transition? Well, you need to see the transitions created from the proper backswing position. So he's able to, to move the lower body first and maintain the leverage angle all the way down. So notice how this leverage angle is maintaining all the way down into the downswing. Then he'll return the club as he comes down back to impact. And I want to tell you, I've measured all this stuff. So if I look at this impact position and the club is realigning with the arm, both from face on and down the line, lead arm from face on, trail arm from down the line, his body's in a rotation here. His, his pelvis is in a rotation. Now, I want to define rotation for you because here's where most golf instructors don't really understand is the pelvis can rotate, but one side can move and another can stay still. And this is where biomechanics has really been beneficial to understanding motion is, for example, when I move into this knee, so in the downswing, when Mo transitions into that knee, you see it stabilized. Now, that's why the foot needs to be rotated out. 
all of you golfers who aren't, aren't paying attention to your feet are running into rotation problems. So you have to have the foot turned out. But watch this. When I go into that knee, all right, this isolates this pelvis. So it, can only, it can't move very much. That does not mean that this side stops. See how this side can continue to rotate? So what's happening is Mo is transitioning. He stabilizes here, but then he continues the rotation here. He's approximately 30 degrees open with the pelvis at the moment of strike, the moment of impact. So, but it's not this. It's not opening up this entire rotation. It's stopping this and turning this. So I want you to understand that rotation isn't always what you think you see. And again, how do you match that model? Well, you gotta get the knee flexed and the foot down and rotate. Now, let's continue this. So you see the trail foot is on the ground. And you see now he's returned the club to impact. Let's continue the motion here. So notice how the club now becomes an extension of the arm. And this is the, the both arms get straight at this point. Very important point in most swing here is when he gets to full release that the trail foot's on the ground. Now why do I want the trail foot on the ground? One of the things that, 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 that can help you more than anything with learning the swing is not only learning how to move the body but how to stop the body. And here's my point to, to keeping the foot on the ground. When, when your lead knee is flexed and your foot's on the ground and you maximize your pelvis rotation, that's as far as you can go. So you've created a limit. The, you have a limited upper body, this can keep going, right? This can, right where Mo is, is full extension. So I can have the lower body limited, but still keep moving the upper body. Now, limited means I've, I've, I've reached a max range. I can only go so far. That's a very good thing when it comes to swing motion because we want to consistently get to impact and then extend to this position. If this foot starts moving, and this knee starts straightening, which usually go together, and the pelvis starts turning, I'm gonna have a hard time consistently getting to the strike. So I want the foot down, the knee flexed, and my upper body to have to deal with this because now it goes to a more consistent place when I get to my extension. So modeling the foot position, the knee position, it all goes together. Most people, foot comes up because they get shift to their upper body, they get too much range, and they start getting inconsistent striking on the golf ball. So again, matching the Mo model will help you tremendously learn to be more consistent. Now, the final thing is the finish position. And seeing Mo's finish, you don't want to keep the head still. You want the head to move forward, and you want all your weight here on the lead knee. Now, notice my lead knee is still flexed. I'm not saying bent. I'm saying flexed and stable. Stability is an important part of that leg. So I get the leverage position transition, rotation and stabilization, and hold your finish here. And this is what I consider the finish when you're actually in your tilt looking at the target, then you stand up like Mo did. But all those positions, if you're matching Mo model, you need to be taking your video of your swing and matching it to Mo and looking at his swing. That's the way you're going to learn this. If you can't do it yourself, we do it for you. That's what we do at Graves Golf in our coaching programs, is we're not only doing live sessions with you, through our Zoom sessions and, and online, you can also send videos to our academy anytime you want and we'll send you instruction on what you need, the next thing you need to be doing to match the model. And let me just finish off by saying this. Golf instruction and you learning the swing for 2023, it's about, it's about one thing. And I know that sounds like, oh, I gotta redo my whole swing. Not, you don't have to redo your whole swing. You have to match the model and do the most, the, start with your address and start matching the model from there and work on the one thing at a time. Address, matching the backswing positions, matching downswing positions, impact positions. So you see it's a, one, it's a one thing deal. You can't work on more than one thing at a time. And as you do this, you get better and better and better for matching the Mo model. So what I want you to do is if you want us to help you, please reach out to us. I'll put a link to our coaching program below, but if you want to just contact one of our coaches and talk to them today, you can just click on the link below and talk to one of our coaches and set up some sessions for you. If you're anywhere in the world, we can be coaching you the single plane swing. We can help you match the model. And I'll guarantee you that if you match the model, you'll become a great ball striker just like Mo Norman. It sure, certainly helped me and it's helping thousands of people around the world. So I want to help you too. So click on the link below in this description. Learn more about getting into our coaching program and I'll see you in the next video.